This is a Carver HR742 receiver, and this one has no display. It also has no audio output, but we can hear the relays engaged, so it has some signs of life. Let's see if we can bring it all the way back. Let's start with the display. This is a vacuum fluorescent display, or VFD. I'm thinking of four things that could cause this issue. There may be more. Number one, the display itself could be dead, and this is the worst case scenario. It would be very difficult to find a good replacement. Number two, we have no or insufficient voltage to the filament. This would be a power supply issue. Number three, the chip that drives the display could have some fault. Or number four, best case scenario, is a connection issue. We got lucky, ours happens to be the connection issue. So watch what happens as I tap on one of the filament pins. You can see we get our display back. So I think I just need to re-solder every single one of the pins on the display, and we'll have our display back permanently. Before I start soldering, let's look at some of the pins. These are two of the filament pins I was pushing on one of these. You can see the rings around the pins indicating a poor connection. This pin doesn't look too healthy. It looks like it was touched up at some point. That was not me. This pin looks like it's missing solder in the back. And I went all the way down the line. None of the pins look great, so we're just going to touch all of them up. I'm all done resoldering all of the connections, and they look much, much better. And now we have our display. Now we get pre-on flashing on the display. I'm not positive, but I'm guessing that means protection enable on, which is just a symptom of our other problem. No audio output, so let's move on to that. This receiver looks pretty clean, but I do see a problem down here with the resistor. Let's zoom in. Down on the main board, this resistor RN04 is completely charred. Let's take a look at the schematic and see what this resistor is doing. This is the best, really the only version of the schematic I can find, so it might be a little tricky to read each component value. We're zoomed in on the amplifier section of the receiver. We have one channel on the top and one channel on the bottom. I've highlighted our charred resistor RN04, which is a 1K ohm resistor. This is in the protection circuit. The function of this resistor is to provide a voltage at the base of this transistor that is proportional to the current flowing through our output transistor. If the current through this output transistor is too high, the voltage on this pin will be high enough to turn this transistor on, which will enable the protection circuit, which is exactly the situation we're in. Because this resistor is charred, that means we had excessive voltage on this pin, which leads to excessive current through the resistor. Because we had excessive voltage on this pin, that likely means we have a defective or shorted output transistor. So that's what we're going to look for. The specific output transistor we're looking at is Q712, which is right here. So I'll use the multimeter. Really all we need to do is look at the resistance between the collector and emitter and look for a short. Pin 2 is the collector, pin 3 is the emitter. I have one of my probes on the emitter, so let's check the collector. And we're shorted, as expected. So I'm going to remove this top board so we can take a closer look at the main board below. There's nothing else too concerning on the rest of this main board. We do have some discoloration around these two transistors as well as around these two. These are in the bias circuit for either channel, so it's possible that the bias is running too high. I'll make sure to adjust the bias to spec once the repair is done. Here is our faulty transistor Q712. This is the other output transistor for that channel. This one is actually also shorted, so both of these will get replaced. And even though the output transistors for the other channel are actually measuring OK, I'm going to replace those as well, just so that they're all matching. I'll also, of course, replace our faulty resistor. So I'm going to get started. Here is our charred resistor, and it's reading 34 kilo ohms, so 34 times what it should. Definitely needs to be replaced. The pads were damaged so much from the heat that I just decided to cut them short and then rip them off completely.
I have both shorted transistors removed and their replacements ready to go. These are not identical to the originals, but their properties meet or exceed that of the original, so they should work just fine. The original insulator is ripped and is just in bad shape anyway, so I'm going to use two brand new sill pads. We're back at the schematic. I've replaced both of these output transistors, and I did make a small mistake. It was not RN04 that was charred, it was RN02. This resistor, this diode, and this resistor are all measuring just fine. But now I'm concerned about this transistor, QN02, because this is the resistor that was charred and had too much current flowing through it. If it didn't flow through this resistor, it must have been flowing through the transistor. So I'm going to pull this out and inspect it out of circuit. Well, I'm glad I pulled it. QN02 is measuring just 273 millivolts across its base emitter junction. This should be somewhere between 500 and 700 millivolts. Definitely a problem. Let's get this replaced as well. Well, I powered it up and nothing bad happened, no smoke. However, we still have an enabled protection circuit. With that, I inspected every single component in this area, and I did find a few more open resistors. R730, right here, should be 68 ohms, it's reading open. R732 should be 220 ohms, a one watt resistor, also reading open. These two will get replaced. I don't have direct replacements for either of these, so they're on order, but I do wanna test this unit now, so I'll see if I can come up with something. Just for testing, I've replaced the open 68 ohm resistor with a 62 ohm resistor. That should be just fine. And I replaced the open 220 ohm 1 watt resistor with these four 220 ohm quarter watt resistors in this configuration. Here we go, one, two, three. So protection enable is still flashing, but it only flashes three times. Goes to a ready and then back to our input. And I heard the relay engage, so we are out of protection mode. That's fantastic. However, we still do have a problem with that right channel. Let me show you what I mean. I have a one kilohertz sine wave at each channel's input. On the top of the scope, we have the left channel and on the bottom, we have our problem right channel. To start, I'll turn up the volume to the left channel only. We have a very nice sine wave on that channel. Now I'll slowly turn up the volume on the right channel. I just barely moved it. We didn't even see an output yet and you can hear the protection circuit kicked back in. So let's keep going. I thought I checked it the first time, but I must have missed it. These are the two emitter resistors for the right channel. It's two 0.18 ohm resistors in a single three watt package. This is the positive half and it's much too high at about two kilo ohms. This is the negative half and it's just fine. This imbalance is definitely a problem and that resistor package will need to be replaced. I don't have a replacement. I do have a 0.33 ohm resistor, so I will use that for testing. Well, our test setup is starting to look pretty sketchy. This is our new 0.33 ohm emitter resistor. Let's take a look at the scope. As I turn the volume up, we'll see what we get. We get two channels, and they both look pretty good. Repaired. My homemade 220 ohm resistor pack has served its purpose, but two of the three resistors have arrived. This is the 220 ohm at one watt, and this is the 68 ohm. Let's get those installed. And finally, we have the emitter resistor. The positive side was reading about 2K ohms in circuit, but it's actually open. 
I must have been reading a parallel resistance. I could not find a direct replacement for this, so I decided to make one. These are two 0.18 ohm 3 watt resistors soldered together in the middle. Should work just fine. Let's get that installed and do a final test. It powered on and came on to protect without issue. It should be able to output 80 watts into an 8 ohm load. Let's see if it can handle that. We'll start by looking at the left channel. At 10 volts per division, we're looking for a little more than 7 divisions for 80 watts. So I'll turn up the volume. Right there is about 80 watts, left channel. Let's move over to the right. Yes, indeed. So the receiver is working, but it's not ready to go home yet. I have a lot of work left to do. As I mentioned, I am going to replace the other channel's output transistors. I'm also going to replace both channels' bias potentiometers with a 10 or 20 turn potentiometer just to give greater resolution when adjusting the bias. I'll replace all of the electrolytic capacitors in the unit. And finally, I'll clean all of the buttons and switches and adjustment potentiometers as well. After all of that work, it should run very, very well once again. Thanks for watching.